So the Acolyte episode eight dropped last night. The season finale for season one. Myself, I think it's a series finale. I don't think there's any way Disney can green light a second season of this show, the series. But here are the highlights. We open up the episode with May. It's Milo Ren's cave on the unnamed planet. She's wearing Milo Ren's helmet and she's breathing like Darth Vader. And even though she hasn't trained in the force in a number of years, somehow she's able to see into the future and she sees May killing Saul. And this, this sequence scares Smilo Ren and he has to use all of his power, all of his strength to get to May to take the helmet off of her. So that's how we start. Then after a little discussion, they all of a sudden have become allies. So Smilo Ren and Osha are now allies. Meanwhile, on Saul's ship, he still has May, May restrained, which she um, will escape from, by the way. Didn't see that coming. But not before Saul tells May that he killed her mother. 16 years ago on the planet Brandock. So May escapes Saul. Does a, I think she does like a force push or something to push him away. And she gets into a, what I, what I'm going to call for lack of a better term, a jump ship and, or no, she stuns him. That's it. She, she stuns him using Pip and then she finds a, a jump ship and takes off. And then Saul pursues her. And they go through this asteroid field and going through the asteroid field, Saul decides to lock his uh, phasers on target. And as he locks his phasers on target, uh, the little rat, rocket raccoon wannabe disables his ship. So May gets away. She gets away down onto Brandock. Meanwhile, back on Coruscant, Venestra has a meeting with a galactic senator. And the galactic senator just happens to be Martian Manhunter. <laughs> I can't make this shit up, folks. And Martian Manhunter does not like the Jedi. He thinks they need to be investigated by the Galactic Senate. And so they have a quick little discussion. And when he leaves, he turns to her and says, may the force be with you. As she's just, you know, telling him about the investigation and the, the Jedi that have been murdered and so on and so forth. So, While that's happening, back on um, what I believe is the long lost Jedi planet, May and Smilo Ren are having a discussion about one, why doesn't Osha come and train with him? And she turns him down. And two, why should they team up to go find May? And the discussion finally ends with, um, well, we'll go together, but we'll see who gets to her first. Meanwhile, as they board the ship, and I wish I could show this to you guys, but from the cave... we see that Dark Plagueis 
has been in the cave this whole time. So we get a Darth Plagueis cameo as Milo Ren and Osha are leaving the planet to head to Brandok. So now everybody's on Brandok. Now, one thing that happens before Saul leaves his ship is he turns on his beacon so the Jedi can find him. So back on Coruscant, Venestra, and I don't know who this Jedi is. I don't have a name for him. He, he looks like a boy band, somebody being a boy band. Well, he comes and informs Vanestra that Saul's beacon is now on. We must go find him. Assemble a team of Jedi. We're going to go to Brandok. So here we are where everything began in episode one. Saul searching for May. Osha and Smilo Ren show up. Osha and Smilo Ren get separated. Saul's having some. Um, he's he's sensing, he's feeling what happened 16 years ago, and he's distraught. Uh, we get to where May goes up into Osha's room where she tried to burn her to death when she said she wanted to leave for the, and become a Jedi. And then a battle begins between Smilo Ren and Saul. Now, I will say this. We don't have all the flippy flippy stuff that we do in, um the prequels when it comes to lightsaber duels, lightsaber battles. However, two things. One, why doesn't Smilo headbutt Saul's lightsaber and disable it? That's what he did in episode, I believe it was episode four, when he murdered all those Jedi, took out a half dozen of them. And two, What's with the Matrix moves? Why do we have to have the Matrix moves? This isn't the Matrix. This is Star Wars. Now, while Smilo and Saul are fighting, Osha finds May, and they decide they're going to get into a little tussle. They're going to get into a fight. And their fight, while both are expressionless, um... It's basically a twin battle where they're using each other's moves at the same time while fighting. It's, 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 it's a horrible fight scene in my opinion. So at one point, Saul sees the Jedi ship and says something to the effect of, um, oh, what was it? they're here or my reinforcements are here or something to that effect. And Smilo Ren says, they're not here for me. So both battles are ensuing. Saul does take out Smilo Ren's lightsaber, by the way, and he's about to kill Smilo Ren when he is disarmed by May. A Jedi Master is disarmed by somebody who is probably a level 2 Force user, in my opinion. That does not happen in Star Wars. So we have this, again, big reveal discussion about Saul killing the mom. But this time, Osha overhears it. Oh. And Saul's lightsaber is now on the ground broken. Because May threw it. 
if I remember correctly. So while Saul is trying to explain himself to May, Osha picks up the broken lightsaber and hears that Saul killed their mother. And while he's also explaining that, he's trying to explain to May that May and Osha are actually one person. And that some that a virgins and uh, yeah, virgins and the force happened there. That's the only way to explain why they're they're separated. Because they're not twins, they're not sisters, they're one person. So Saul tries to explain, I did this for you, Osha. I did this to protect you, Osha. And Osha, who, again, hasn't traded in the force in a number of years, does a force choke on Saul to get him to shut up, similar to what Anakin would do. So again, we're ripping off from the prequels. Well, May ends up murdering Saul. Now remember, the very first episode, I should say Osha ends up murdering Saul. But from the very first episode of this series, May had to kill the four Jedi that were involved in the events of that evening without using a weapon. Well, Osha just did what May couldn't do or wouldn't do. Problem is, the Force is a weapon. So Smilo Ren comes over to her, puts his hand on her shoulder, and she reacts by somehow igniting Saul's lightsaber. And while she's got the lightsaber pointed at Smilo Ren, the lightsaber turns red. Now, I'm sure the folks over at Wikipedia are applauding this right now, but this is something that does, does not happen. So I guess now Osha is the acolyte. She's the Sith. Where May is no longer the Sith. I guess that's the symbolism there. Meanwhile, the Jedi show up with Vernestra. Vanestra senses that Smilo Ren is there and can't believe he's there. He immediately puts on his helmet so she can't track him. They send the tracker off to find May and Osha with a, a band of Jedi. May and Osha. May tells Osha, I know how to get out of here. Follow me as the Jedi show up. Vanestra sees Saul's body and senses what happened there. Meanwhile, Smilo Ren is overlooking the entire scene. And she senses that he's there. The girls escape. They make it to the tree where it all began. They have a discussion. They do their little saying that they said in episode one as young kids. And then Smilo Ren shows up. And Smilo says, if I can find you, the Jedi can certainly find you. But instead of both girls saying, all right, let's go. We'll go with you. Osha decides, um, let her go and I'll stay and train with you. But if, if we let her go, she's going to be tracked down by the Jedi. And Smilo Ren says, well, I can wipe her memories. I can wipe her mind. And Osha says, do it. And so he does. Which makes absolutely zero sense in all this. Needless to say, the mind wipe happens. May is found by the Jedi. We, we go to Coruscant, where May is now on Coruscant with the Jedi. 
She speaks to Vanestra. Vanestra is trying to pump her for information. Vanestra figures out that her mind's been altered because she doesn't remember anything. Vanestra mentions something about her sister. And then Vanestra goes in front of the, jet, um, the Galactic Senate, tells a good story, basically saying that Saul was a troubled individual. He is a good man, but troubled. This is what happened. Martian Manhunter again demands an immediate vote to do an independent investigation into the Jedi Council. Uh, they show Vanestra doing the ritual of burning the body of a fallen Jedi. She again is talking to May. And then we get the, 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 the finale, the final scenes, where we have back on Smilo Ren's planet, which I believe is the Jedi, the long-lost Jedi planet that Luke ended up in, in the Disney Lucasfilm Star Wars trilogy. We get Osha just staring off into the, into the sunset, into the water, holding Saul's lightsaber. And Smilo Ren walks up to her and holds her hand as they gaze off into the sunset. Meanwhile, back on Coruscant, Vernestra walks into a room and you get to see the back of Yoda's head. And she says, Master, we have something to discuss. And that's it. It's over. It's all over. The Acolyte. Done. Finished. So there's my quick take on the happenings of season eight or episode eight of the Acolyte. For me, I give it a two out of 10 because it didn't resolve anything. This, this episode is setting up a season two, which in my opinion, cannot, should not, will not happen. So what do you guys think? The Acolyte, season one. Comment down below. Share your thoughts. While you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Share this video out there with your friends and family. And with that, I will see you guys later.